Ready? Sir, uh, I am shifting my net. But does anybody else want to start then? I don't mind anybody wants to start. You guys want to start? No? But this time I'm free to the Bucky Kiss also start karate. Cody? Are we starting? No? So may I start? Oh. We're waiting, sir. Do you want to start? Do you want to start? Hello, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, of course I can. Go and start then. Yes, sir. I can see the image now. I use flight. Okay, so tell me what it is and how are you going to describe this then? Uh, sir, this is a, a plain radiograph of an undocumented patient showing the AP and uh, lateral view of the uh, distal uh, femur along with the knee joint, and there is uh, implant uh, just above the fracture is a long oblique fracture and so in the exam uh, it's, uh, has three minutes or two minutes of words without scoring any points what is what you're going to say this is an image of a skeletally mature person with an AP and lateral describe everything okay yes sir yeah so uh, um, can we do that? So now, what do you want to do with this? Mother? Uh, sir, first, sir, after detailed history and clinical examination, first thing I would like to do uh, that I will uh, screen it for any uh, infection. How can you have infection? Routine investigation. So the patient has just come to you after having a fall. How can you have infection? Okay. Sir, uh, okay, let's start again. Right. You have said that this is a patient who has just come in from casualty or A&E or whatever, and you, you were asked to describe an excess. So you will say this is a skeletally mature adult who has got an AP and lateral plane films of his distal femur showing the knee joint, and he has a periprosthetic fracture. So the next thing you will tell me is, assuming he has been ATLS triaged, yes, yeah, and the patient... Right. right. This is an isolated injury. My plan of management would be, okay? Did you get that? Sir. Okay, so as you got it, it, sir. patient is ATLS triaged. This is an isolated injury. My plan of management would be, so what is your plan of management for an isolated distal femur, sort of a, a periprosthetic fracture? Uh. Sir, first of all, uh, I would like to have the uh, baseline investigations. 
which is and which is cbc and uh, uh, renal function liver functions and uh, to assess the overall well being of the patient this is a very uh, old patient but everything is okay so what now uh, sir the next thing would be uh, uh, that i would like to uh, uh, see uh, अच्छा ये मरीज ए नहीं में आते हैं तो क्या करते हैं पहला काम क्या करते हैं उसके साथ स्टेबलाइज करते हैं उसको मैनेजमेंट इज यू टेल मी दैट इन आई वुड लाइक टू स्टेबलाइज दिस फ्रैक्चर एंड देन आई वुड लाइक टू सी इफ आई कैन फिक्स दिस ओके आपके पास या नॉन ऑपरेटिव मैनेजमेंट है या ऑपरेटिव मैनेजमेंट है ठीक है राइट सर व्हाट व्हिच वन डू यू वांट टू चूज अब आप आपको जो सवाल आपने से पूछना है वो ये है कि इस एक्सरे को देखें आप आपको क्या चीज नजर आ रही है इसके अंदर सर इट लुक्स लाइक अ पैथोलॉजिकल फ्रैक्चर सो एंड या ओके कौन सी पैथोलॉजी सर इट्स अ इट द टिश्यू Uh, the soft tissue planes uh, looks involved and no there is uh, no, no tumor there is no tumor it's a straight forward fall so pathology is me yeah this my osteopenia hai can you know right, in fact there is got osteopenia so this person fell and broke the shaft of the femur because the patient is osteopenia so osteopenia mein aur osteoporosis mein kya fark hai Sir, in uh, sir, uh, the, we will do the DEXA scan. Then we will will be able to know the, uh, either it's osteopenia or osteoporosis. Unless you do the scan, it is osteopenia. If you do a a DEXA scan, then you have to be point two two point five standard deviation away from normal. You will call it osteoporosis of the T score. Yeah. So this is osteopenia. Right, sir. Unless you do a DEXA scan. Up, what are the next steps? in the trauma i am considering yeah sir considering it is as uh, considering it is a, a isolated injury and patient is uh, fit for the surgery i would uh, uh, like to have a, a, a joint above and uh, i would like to have a x ray of the hip and then after the removal of the above implant i would like to do a intermedullary that is the weight sharing implant for this preferably nail So your 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 theory is correct. You would like to do an intramedullary implant, yes, and I agree with you. But if this patient got DHS, who are they? Or is it DHS? Who are they? The cell. So if you take all the metal work out, the whole bone will become osteopenic and it will become poor. Yes, the nail will help, but there is is there any other way you can solve this out? So I accept. Long blade. Long blade DHS is another option. But you have to take something out. Why do you want to take this out? Why can't you fix this with everything still intact? So then we can apply lag it and apply another neutralization plate over it. Okay. So you can leave it alone by putting it in traction. Yes. Right, sir. Yeah, and if you do that, there is a high mortality and morbidity, and they will possibly die from PE. Okay, but you can right. put. interaction and fix them and manage them non operatively if you want to manage them operatively you can operate by taking the implants out and putting another one in or you can leave the implants and putting additional implants in it so if you your option of taking this out and putting a nail in is very valid and i accept that but i didn't do that i did something else so what else can you do here that's my question now uh so you said plate you can plate this okay But if you want to plate this, what are you going to do specifically with that plate to make this more stable and more uh, uh, working up with some stability? Uh, sir, I will uh, uh, lag it and then uh, apply a plate over it. Yeah, but it's an osteopenia. Better stability. You will put a plate in it, but you have to do something with the plate to help it. You either put a a allograft or you put a double plating. Great, because one plate is not going to hold this. 
Yes, sir. Sir, another option is if I can do a retrograde nail over here, a short retrograde nail. You can't take these two screws out and put a retrograde nail in. That's true, yeah. But I didn't do that. What I did was this. I'll show you what I did. So I put a plate, yes. And I put a strut graft, fibular strut graft into the canal to make it an intramedullary, as you were saying. I body plated it and I then uh, uh, cable the rest of the bone into it. So I, I, I did not take the other bit out because that was too difficult or too us to pay. So I use a plate, intramedullary buttress uh, strut graft, and another strut graft outside with cables. Okay, it makes it stable now. Okay. Nice. Yeah, this is not what you should say in the exam. In the exam, you will say that I will actually manage this non-operatively or operatively. Operatively, I have two choices. I will either take the implant, put a bigger implant in it, or intermediate in it. Or I can leave this implant, but I can use a metal work, but I have to double plate it to allow it to buttress so that it doesn't crush. Or I can put a strut inside the fibula, in, a fibula strut inside the, the, the fracture so that it becomes stable. So now we have stability medially, laterally, and intramedullary. So this becomes an osteopenic fracture, which is stable. So the principles, it is a skeletally mature person's AP and lateral showing straight away as a periprosthetic fracture, intertrochanteric fracture, yet it is a long oblique hair or fractures for times they have Straight away, you are a consultant. You are not a PG, you are not a you are going to become a consultant. So you have to tell them what, what is the diagnosis. Okay, after that, plan of management, operative, non-operative, we will start with the same thing. If you ask them, what is available, you will ask them all the choices. If you ask what you want to do, then you will do what you want to do, and then justify what you want to do. Agreed? Everybody happy with this? Can we move on? Agreed, sir. Can we move on? Somebody else who wants yes, to... Yes, sir, please. Who wants to uh, have a look? You can see the fibula is here and, and the struts is there, but yeah. Okay, so this. So who's next? Come on, guys. Your exam is not so far away, so you have to participate to learn how to talk. Nobody wants to talk. This is supracondylar humerus fracture. Sorry, before you start, can you tell me who you are and where you're from? I, I just want to know who's talking, that's all. Come on, guys. So who was talking? So I have Omer and you. Some, Sorry? Someone talked and then left. Is it? Okay. Well, I don't want to scare anybody, but this is the exam. You have to learn how to talk. If you don't learn how to talk, you will find it very difficult in the day. Uh, Dr. Najam, if you please, if you want to talk. So you made Dr. Najam leave also, is it? Come on, guys, we're wasting time. Come on, hurry up. Now, somebody has to take the lead and say. There's loads of you guys. I don't mind. You know, you can make mistakes, but this is the time to make mistakes. You don't have to do it in the exam. Okay? No, no one to take part? So do you want to go again, brother? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, sir, this is a plan. This is a planned radiograph of a skeletally mature patient uh, showing the AP view of the AP and lateral view of the uh, elbow uh, and the distal half of the humerus and the proximal uh, one third of the rad uh, radius and Allah. You don't describe that. You uh, the supracondylar fracture of an adult um, showing or shown on the AP and lateral with displacement. Okay. So, बिल्कुल जो है ना बात करनी है एग्जाम में जो है ना आप अब कंसल्टेंट बन रहे हैं आपके पास जो ना नंबर बनाना इसी तरह की आप कंसल्टेंट से बात करें सो दिस इज एन एक्सरे और एपी लैटरल ऑफ द एल्बो दिस इज अ ट्रॉमा दिस इज अ जेंटलमैन हु हु फेल ऑफ द लैडर ही इज 69 इयर्स ओल्ड आई थिंक ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट ही इज डन एंड ही इज कम टू सी अस व्हाट आर वी गोइंग टू डू uh, sir, after detailed uh, history and clinical examination, uh, uh, first I would like to have uh, a. Uh, Assuming that this is an isolated injury, ATLS charge has been uh, taken care of. 
आफ्टर टेकिंग डिटेल हिस्ट्री एंड एग्जामिनेशन माय प्लान ऑफ मैनेजमेंट वुड बी इस तरह करना है ताकि साफ सुथरा लगे एग्जामिनर को कि आप तैयारी कर सर आई कैन नॉट हियर यू राइट नाउ माय लास्ट यू मीन दिस आइसोलेटेड इंजरी ये प्रैक्टिस करें ना बार बार तो ये लफ्ज इसी तरह आने चाहिए साफ सुथरी जबान में बात करें एग्जामिनर के सामने ठीक है ओके सो दिस इज सुपर सुपर कॉन्डलर फ्रैक्चर ओके सो व्हाट इज योर प्लान फॉर दिस पेशेंट अज्यूमिंग दैट देयर इज नो एटीएलएस प्रॉब्लम दिस इज अ आइसोलेटेड इंजरी आफ्टर टेकिंग दिस इन एग्जामिनेशन माय प्लान ऑफ मैनेजमेंट वुड बी व्हाट व्हाट आर यू गोइंग टू डू दिस सर ऑपरेटिव non operative management and operative management very good you can, i can offer this person operative and non operative management okay so where do you offer non operative management in supracondylar fractures uh sir uh, in supracondylar fracture uh, usually the non operative treatments usually fail mostly we go for the operative treatment at this age this is the question my question is where will you offer non operative management sir i will offer the operative i know you do well but i'm asking you where will you offer, offer non operative if the person is not fit to have an operation yes <coughs> if the person right. is very old right? you can see this is a bag of bones or a frail elbow right or there is other contraindications such as there is infection or an open wound that you don't want to play to the same time then you will offer a non operative management either permanently or temporarily agar kisi ko open wound hai aap ek self fixated dal do uske andar theek hai na lekin ye ke you have to know what what are the indication of non operative and basically the non operative is if the patient has contraindication to surgery is not fit any problem hai usko diabetic hai infection ho rahi hai usko koi aur chakkar ho raha hai usko ya tumor hai kya hai but predominantly in the young fit patients most of the time you offer an operative process what are you going to offer for the operative sir uh, sorry sir i didn't hear so now we have decided we want to offer operative procedure for this person so what are you going to okay, offer okay sir sir first i would like to have a, a ct scan with 3d reconstruction so you have a uh, for the bet- for the better evaluation of the fracture pattern and its extension So this is a CT scan, and and this is the only good pictures we've had. They didn't do a 3D for us, but you can see that you can see that this is one segment and this is the humerus. Yeah, so it is separated and moved forward, and you can see on the AP view that that bit is missing. That's missing because it's gone in the front of the patient, as you can see in here. Yeah, so it is it is a very distal humeral condyle fracture. Now what? uh sir um, after looking at the ct and the uh, age of the patient uh, the any uh, plating uh, won't be successful in this patient but that's not true uh, so you can do this but what i wanted to understand is that it's a very distal humerus fracture Want to fix this with a plate? What approach will you use? That's what the person is going to go to. You can predict what the examiner is asking you, isn't it? So I've shown you a very distal humeral fracture, and I've said we want to fix it. We're not replacing it because in Pakistan the elbow replacement that's an option. If you are a 65 plus in, in in England or in America, you will offer an elbow. But if you can't offer elbow replacement, you will offer fixation. Okay. So now, if you offer fixation, All right, sir. it's a very distal fracture. What do you want to do with this? You want to do a truck or look around osteotomy, isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chevron osteotomy and then proceed. Exactly. When the examiner is going, if he's showing you a CT like that, that means it's very distal. And for this to fix, you have to do the Chevron. So this is what we did. We used the fracture with KYs. We did an look around osteotomy, and we put two uh, uh, parallel plates: a posterior lateral and anterior medial plate. The person had full function afterwards. Uh, early days, it's only three months down the line, but is is working, doing well. So you must understand what the examiner is asking you. If he's showing you a very distal humerus fracture, he wants to know whether you know about olecranon or not. Okay. Okay, sir. What we did. These are special plates specific for 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 distal humerus fractures. You can see on this picture that it's got a curve to go to the condyles, goes very distal. and you can see the screws are holding everything very distally not in the joint and even to the condyle right to the end of it so so this is an olecranon plating system but the fracture has been reduced and we did do an olecranon osteotomy so how do you 
Where do you place your original lost chart where, where does it go? Sir, we can fix it with a plate and we can also fix it with a, a tension band wiring. Okay. So what, uh, what, what but how do you do your rust chart Do you have any guidelines? Any, <laughs> you want to do your rust chart me? Uh, no, sir. Sorry, I don't know about it. Okay. So what you need to do is follow the triceps and, and follow the, um, the olecranon. Okay. And when you follow your, your triceps uh, and your fractures, you will see where the coronoid process is. Yeah. Your osteotomy should be above the coronoid process in the articular surface, which is not articulating, i.e. the one that does not have any part in the articulating surface. Okay, so it's just above the process, just above the coronoid process, and you do an incomplete osteotomy with a saw and then break it so that it's got a got sort of spike so that it can fit into, okay? So what's the bad thing about, or what's the problem with doing a, 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 a tension banding with these patients? Uh, so the wires and the no idea, sir. they are problems. Yeah, they are. They, they have to take them out in the future. So you have to have a second procedure. If you all migrate, the wires break and it causes problems. You put a plate on it, or you put out tension banding, but with a view that you will come back and take it out later in the future. Okay. Does anybody else want to have a go? Yes, sir. Sir, this construct on the distal humerus, is it the uh, 1990 construct we call it? Yeah, this is, this is a parallel construct, not a, a perpendicular construct. So there are two types. Perpendicular one, opposite each other, in a, in a This is not a posterior uh, uh, medial. And, 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 uh, Okay. You move on. Yes, sir. Please continue. Somebody else has to participate. I'm taking time to teach. You guys can't sit there and watch and not doing anything. I don't like passive learning. <laughs> who's next? Is that really for them? Anybody else? No? Nobody wants to have a chance. So you're all doing exams, guys. You must need, need to participate. This, this is not passive learning. It's too late now if you don't want to participate. Exam is all about saying something. Until you say something, you won't know what you're doing. Later. So, anybody else? Besides brother, who else wants to go? This is now arthritic knee, and we will have a chat about arthritis of the knee. That's a very easy topic to talk on, isn't it? So I'm sure everybody knows something. So who's doing the exam in, in, in December, 24th, 25th of December? Who's doing exams? All of you, some of you, nobody? Sir, most of people are doing it. Yeah, I know. Then why can't you answer the questions? Isn't it? You, you're going to do it for the first time on the exam day. No preparation. Try and run Nikita as you directly exam. Sorry? Sir, uh -huh. people, are, people, people are shy of speaking, maybe. Fantastic. You're right in time to look at the X-rays and tell me what's wrong with it. Well, this is a weight bearing AP view of the left knee showing uh, distal femur, proximal tibia and proximal fibula. Most obvious finding is increased middle joint space and uh, obliterated lateral joint space with multiple osteophytes and uh, sclerosis formation in okay. the AP view with uh, uh, probably uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, no, no. In the left knee Straight and up. in the lateral view. Okay. Can you hear me? And in the... Sorry, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I can hear you. Exam may not bath pay silly points. Times I have them up. You will say this is an X-ray of a skeletally mature person showing an AP and lateral view, which shows arthritis of the lateral compartment. Possibly patellar femoral joint is also arthritic. Okay. So it's a two-compartment or bi-compartment arthritis of the left knee. Agreed? 
मुझे क्या प्रॉब्लम है This person has got rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Yes, sir. Rheumatoid. Bilkul. You have to say it straight forward. This is a lateral compartment arthritis. Examiner, you say, "Is this normal?" You say, "No, this is uncommon." So, what is wrong with this patient? I think this person has got a soft tissue problem. We, I think this person has got rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Bilkul, sir. Bilkul, sir. Compartment में arthritis क्यों होता है rheumatoid में? Uh, due to the various deformity uh, uh, sorry not not like this okay so jo jo soft tissue problem hota hai na wo generalized problem hota hai localized nahi hota hai ye ke alawa bhi aur sare joints involved hote hain sabse jo common joint involved hota hai wo kaun sa hota hai rheumatoid mein ya to hand hota hai na aur ya foot and ankle hota hai theek hai hind foot ki deformity zyada common hoti hai but is but kisi aur problem ke फोर्सेजिटी When you have a soft tissue problem such as rheumatoid, then the hind foot is not normal. Because the hind foot is not normal, the balance changes, and therefore you have more forces going through the lateral compartment. This is why I say lateral compartment is affected by the rheumatoid uh, problem. Yes, sir. Agree? Yes, sir. We have been told that rheumatoid is lateral. Why is it? ये सब लोग को सब पता था लेकिन तुम लोगों ने अपने उसको इस्तेमाल नहीं किया कि क्यों लेटल होती है क्योंकि हर एक को पता है कि रोमोटाइड आइसोलेटेड नहीं होती है जनरलाइज प्रॉब्लम होता है क्या करोगे इस पेशेंट में विद कंजर्वेटिव ट्रीटमेंट ठीक तो कंजर्वेटिव ट्रीटमेंट इज नॉट वर्किंग पेशेंट्स का प्रॉब्लम यह है कि ना वो चल सकता है ना उसको पेन हो रही है पहले वो चल सकता अब वो कट से आ गया हो सकता है कि चला जाए अब क्या करूं सर आई रादर मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट भी कंटिन्यू करेंगे द रीजन बीइंग कि उसकी जो एंटी रोमेटिक ड्रग्स है उसको आई विल कंटिन्यू एंड आई विल डिस्कस द ट्रीटमेंट ऑप्शन विद द पेशेंट ओके सो व्हाट ऑप्शन आर यू गोइंग टू गिव द पेशेंट नॉन ऑपरेटिव सर नॉन ऑपरेटिव ट्रीटमेंट मेजर्स विल इंक्लूड वेट रिडक्शन जिसमें आपको बताते हैं कौन सी चीज पहले करनी है वो डू यू नो वैट प्रिंसिपल इज कॉल्ड प्रिंसिपल ट्राइपोडी पहले नहीं पहले का पेशेंट दिखा है सब खामोश हो गए फिर 
सर बिल्कुल देख रहे हैं का पेशेंट सॉरी आपकी लाइन में डिस्ट्रॉक्शन आई गेस काफी है तो इसकी आवाज सुनने में मसला हो रहा है बाकी लोगों ने कल म्यूट नहीं किया सबके शोर शराबा चल रहा है इसलिए मैं अगर सबको म्यूट कर दूंगा तो फिर कोई किसी की आवाज भी नहीं आएगी तो इससे बेहतर है कि आप लोग जो पार्टिसिपेट ना कर रहे हो ना वो अपने आप को म्यूट कर ले जैसे सवाल पूछ रहे हैं वो अनम्यूट कर ले सो so, उसमें यह होता है कि अगर आपने नी पहले कर लिया ना तो जब आप हिप करेंगे तो तो ठीक होगा लेकिन अगर आपने हिप पहले कर लिया और नी के लिए उसको नाइनटी नाइनटी बेंड करोगे तो टेबल में हिप डिसलोकेट हो सकती है आपकी ठीक है तो पहले बिग टो और लेटर टो और हील करनी जिसकी वजह से ट्राईपॉड गेट आ जाती है राइट तो आपकी ट्राईपॉड गेट सही हो गई तो उसके बाद आपने उसके हाथों को ठीक करना है क्योंकि उसने कोटी लेके चलना है उसके बाद आपने उसकी नी ठीक करनी है फिर उसका हिप ठीक करना है फिर उसके बाद उसका एल्बो और फिर शोल्डर ठीक करना है इस ऑर्डर में जो है रोमोटाइट पेशेंट्स को ऑपरेट करना है नी जो होती है ना तीन टाइप्स की होती है ना एक कंस्टेंट एक अनकंस्टेंट और एक सेमी कंस्टेंट इसमें कौन सी डालनी होगी डालेंगे तो बहुत जल्दी लूज हो जाएगी ये तो बहुत देर की बात है इसमें जो है ना आप उसको क्रुशियट ठीक है राइट सर इस्तेमाल करेंगे यस यू कैन नॉट यूज़ बिकॉज़ सॉफ्ट टिश्यू पे आप भरोसा नहीं कर सकते हैं ठीक है बिल्कुल सर यस ओके सर एक क्वेश्चन था या पूछे सर इन द वेलगस नी इफ वी करेक्टेड डू द टोटल नी सो द एमसीएल कुड हैव बीन वेरी मच रिलैक्स्ड सो कैन वी गिव नी ब्रेस इन सच केसेस इफ वी आर फीलिंग दैट एमसीएल इज रिलैक्स और शुड वी प्राइमरीली डू सम कंस्ट्रक्शन इफ इट इज नॉट अबाउट यू गो यू यू शुड यू शुड बी एबल टू जस्टिफाई द स्टेबिलिटी अगर आपने टोटली डिटैच कर दिया ना तब भी पोस्टीरियर स्टेबलाइज्ड नी जो होती है ना उसको काफी हेल्प करती है आप उसको ऐसा ब्रेस दें जो के हिंज ब्रेस बनेगी सारा पापा से खराब जाएगा ना उसका यू कैन गिव देम परमानेंट ब्रेस यू कैन गिव देम अंटिल देम इवन हील यू कैन स्कैन करते हैं विजाल को आइए देखते हैं वांट्स टू गो देयर So this is a 50 this is a 65 year old who's had a knee replacement sorry hip replacement bilaterally done at different times uh, the, the right one was done 7 uh, years ago and the left one was done 10 years ago guys there is a lot of disturbance in the background so if you are not answering not talking you should mute yourself yeah i can do it here you want me to do it i'll do it so who wants to go far do you want to have a go Ismail, nobody wants to go. Guys, this means you know you take part, you will learn. I I don't shout, I don't scream, I don't hit. You know, but you will save a lot of money if you talk today because exam will end up never. Sir, this is the famous APU in which bilateral total hip replacement uh, implants are being seen, in right. which. Uh, Sir, this is the pelvis APU. Good, good. I can hear. Yeah, yes. Okay. Okay. 
of bilateral total lip replacement post bilateral total lip replacement in which uh, uh, both acetabulum and uh, femur are being cemented and there are areas of uh, osteolysis and seen in the left uh, femur sir and uh, answer exam mein kya doge sir aapne bahut sari kahani sunayi mujhe abhi tak samajh nahi aaya ki kya what are you trying to tell me i know what you're trying to tell me but you have to unless you tell me not acceptable showing bilateral cemented total hip replacement the hip replacements are failing there is loosening on both sides okay to aap ye bol dena to mujhe samajh aayega ki aap ye kya kehna cha rahe hain theek hai okay so so let's talk about the left hip so what's happening here what implant has been used nobody wants to have a go now what implant has been used what is the most common implant that is used in the world um so me here so this is a chanli block okay ek is yes sir this is chanli hip chanli monoblock yeah so chanli monoblock chanli monoblock chanli monoblock hai theek hai ab isme loosening stibula mein bhi hai aur femur mein bhi hai you know any classification will classify loosenings for you Yes, sir. Sir, it's uh, for the femur. It's groins uh, that is from one to fourteen, and uh, for the stabulum, it's uh, Dilly and Chanley classification, which is type one, two, and. Three. So, if I ask you for classification, now we are coming. So, what do you say? This thing is totally loose. We can't give it to you. Nice. It is totally implant in which all the seven zones are loose, yes. and in the acetabulum, I think yes, all uh, zone uh, one, two, three, all three are loose. Yes. So, what are you going to plan with this patient now? Sir, I rule out the infection at site because uh, it can be infective pathology as well. Yes. So you have to say in the exam you want to confirm that this loosening is aseptic or infected. Agreed? Yes, sir. Agreed. So how are you going to do that? So I will proceed the hematological investigation, including TBC, ASS, CRP. Okay. So they are all normal. What now? And uh, I may aspirate the joint simply. So how much uh, to... percentage of aspiration give you a positive result? Uh, are you asking about the percentage? Yeah. What What is the you know what is the uh, 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 what is called that? Uh, Uh, sensitivity specificity uh, sorry yeah of 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 doing an aspirate exactly i don't know the percentage very little less than 25% of them come positive okay so you will do it for completeness but it will not give you information so what's the next thing you going to do sir bone scan yes the bone scan will show you loosening how would you know on a bone scan that this is infected or this is just loosening sir probably there will be increased uptake in all the three phases absolutely because of inflammation of vena the blood supply badh jayegi to all three phases mein uska bada hoga aur kya kar sakte ho uske sath um lucas like and scan the test ke sath infection ko malum karne ke liye blood hota hai na usme leukocytes uh, uh, sir we indium labeled we can yes we can do indium labeled uh, not indium scan kya hota hai wo toxic ho jata hai hum usko aap kahenge leukocyte tag scanning theek hai yes sir ab sir yeah ye jo alpha defensin hai i was studying in somewhere ke alpha defensin we can do for ruling out the infection yes, is it per operative or is it a hematological investigation it's a hematological investigation yeah So, so the next, yeah, so the next <coughs> thing is that we have to revision it. Okay, revision it. Before that, what do we do? What do we do? Sir, I will tell the uh, patient to regard it as an incontinence of surgery, and uh, most uh, importantly, it's a revision surgery. It might it needs a second revision. It might uh, have infection. So, this is what you have to talk about. You have to tell the patient to do it in one stage or in two stages. Okay. ये कैसे डिसाइड सर इंफेक्टिव पैथोलॉजी देन वी डू अ टू स्टेज इफ इट्स नॉट इंफेक्टिव सो आई वोंट बी टेलिंग द पेशेंट अबाउट टू स्टेज यू विल टेल द पेशेंट एवरी टाइम दैट दिस इज गोइंग टू स्टेज ऑपरेशन एवरी टाइम ओके यू कैन टेल देम 
I may try to do a one-stage procedure. There are only very limited one-stage procedures. One-stage procedure have a CPP less than uh, uh, two for for three consecutive reading uh, two weeks apart. So chair of the in the test can a CRP ke or what normal or leukocyte scan is called normal or third is that this is the surgical procedure that is more than the year has been done. So we do a dare procedure that is called the uh, um, branch of study which is called normal. All day, always it's a two stage. First stage, and spacer down there. The second stage, my okay. प्रॉपर सर्जरी उसमें भी जो है सीआरपी करते हैं हर तीन हफ्ते बाद और अगर उसके जो है ना तीन रिजल्ट्स नॉर्मल हो तब उसके बाद सेकंड स्टेज करते हैं उधर एग्जाम में सेफ होने एग्जाम में हमेशा कहना है कि मैंने टू स्टेज करना है सर मैक्सिस के इफेक्ट्स नॉर्मल प्रेजेंट पैथोलॉजी में वाले टू स्टेज मतलब आई डिडंट हियर यू सॉरी कैन यू रिपीट द क्वेश्चन If it, the scan doesn't show any infective pathology, these are CRP are normal. So yeah. why two stage? No. If it is worsening uh, of aseptic type, yes, you can do a one stage procedure. But in in most of the places, aseptic loosening is very unusual. You know, unless it is पंद्रह बीस साल हो गए हिप डले हुए तो तो हो सकता है. लेकिन अगर साल के अंदर अंदर जो है ना फेल हो गए ना हिप तो इसका मतलब है कि infection definitely किसी stage पे इसमें हुई है इसके अंदर. आप प्रूफ कर सकते हैं इधर कि ये जो है इस पेशेंट को इन्फेक्शन नहीं है तो यू कैन डू वन स्टेज प्रोसीजर सो इफ यू आर डूइंग वन स्टेज प्रोसीजर व्हाट आर यू गोइंग टू डू ड्यूरिंग द ऑपरेशन आई गो विद सीटी स्कैन ऑफ द पेल्विस एज वेल टू नो द एसिड लेवल ऑफ बोन स्टॉक बोन स्टॉक लुक्स वेरी गुड बट व्हाट एल्स कैन यू डू एवरी टाइम यू ऑपरेट ऑन दिस पेशेंट You have to take a culture swab from all layers, from skin to the joint. उसको लेवल करना है ताकि पता चले उसमें pathological organism तो नहीं है. You have to give them antibiotics for at least six weeks after the surgery if you think it was infection or had infection or was supposed to. Therefore, a one stage procedure it is very very difficult. Most surgeons, uh, unless it's an ASAP, for example, be salga prada hip nikal rahe ho. Most of them do at two stage. You are doing one stage. This is not a problem. You can always change your mind during the procedure. You can do one stage and give antibiotics long term. There's a lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, you know noises in the background. We we need to make sure that if you're not talking, you need to mute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Do we do next? Yeah. Yeah. How about this one? Guys, last one. Okay, आप लोग सब आज बजट तो थक गए हैं, देर भी होगी। Last one. So actually, I'm told that in which there's lots of uh, noise. Who's, who's speaking now? Sorry. No, whoever is not speaking, can they please mute themselves so that we can hear? One, what is this? Uh, sir, most obvious finding is uh, in the left TP uh, is um, loss of rotation of the humeral head. I mean, uh, most likely this is posterior dislocation of the left shoulder. No, God, no. So this is a shoulder of the left side showing um, a superior migration of the humerus. You can even see the acromion scalloping. Can you see that? So yes, sir. An acute phenomena. Is definitely be rotator cuff pathology, uh, massive tear of rotator cuff. Yes, yeah, so this is a cuff tear pathology. Yeah. Do you know any classification yes, which classifies these shoulders and tell you whether you repair them or replace them? Obviously, you have to be 65 or above before you can replace them. But it, what what tells you that you can replace this or repair this? Is there anything you know? So there's a Hamada classification, which tells you whether the joint is arthritic or not. If the joint is arthritic, then you cannot do cuff repairs because it will not want to work. It's like a an arthroscopy <coughs> if there's arthritis. <coughs> This is the okay, and scalloping of the acromion. This is a 
a, a patient with a chronic cough tear. So what is the management of a cough tear? Have I lost you all again? What is the management of a cough tear? Can you repeat it? What is the management of a cough tear? So obviously the first thing you have to do is pain relief. Pain relief, you can give them a steroid. What is the role of steroids in joints? Decrease the inflammation process. Uh, it's a diagnostic phenomena, these steroids. So why do, you, why do you get pain in joints? Due to arthritis, uh, eburnation of the cartilage and uh, rubbing of the nerve endings um, uh, with no, each so other. There is no pain, they don't have nerve sensors to tell you. The pain is a repair process. Because when there is inflammation, you have interleukins and the process factor alpha and all that, they are coming here to help. Those have got a low pH and therefore they cause pain. When you give them steroid, all these things go away and pain goes away. Steroid injection is only a diagnostic, not a therapeutic procedure, although it does help therapeutically. You can't give injections to people every three weeks. That's what I found in Pakistan. And the patient I to do cuff repair on had an injection every three weeks for nearly five years at 1500 rupees each. That, that's malpractice. You can't just give steroids. Steroid only is a diagnostic phenomenon. Okay, anyway, coming back to cuff repairs, what, what, what you need to make sure there's no arthritis and then you need to reattach the cuff. Okay, so you can do it open or arthroscopic. So when you reattach the cuff, how do you reattach the cuff? No idea, sir. You have to roughen the bone to so make it show that there is cancellous bone because then will only grow with cancellous bone. It can't grow with combinated bone or cortical bone. So it has to be, you have to make a trough, a roughening for the tendon to grow into, and then you repair it with two layers. When it's open or closed, it is a two layer repair where you repair a, a, a footprint, which is where the cuff is attached, and the lateral margin. This is called transosseous equivalent repair because you're trying to make it go through the bone which you used to do in the past when they were open okay but the management of cough repair is pain relief first physio if it doesn't work then you you bring the cuff back if you can't bring the cuff back then what can you do so the joint is arthritic um, um one can think of uh, the reverse order arthroplasty isn't it why why reverse Because uh, there are no cuff uh, to support the conventional uh, implant. So if you have no cuff, why do you want to? Uh, why do you want to, uh, to? Can you see guys see me? Yeah. So this is humeral head, yeah, and this is socket. Can you see? Can you see what I'm showing you? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So yes, sir. I can see you. Okay. Okay, so you can see this is humeral head and this is socket, yeah? So when you have yes, off, the humerus goes up like that. So because the ball is not in the socket, it's not congruent and it doesn't work. So by doing a cuff repair, you bring it down or by doing a reverse. So that's your head. On the head, you put a socket and on the socket side, you put a head. So now the head can't go up because it's catching it like that. Can you see that? So the ball is in the socket and then the deltoid works. Okay, so in the reverse, the, the, the function for it to work is the deltoid. You have to put the ball back into the socket so that the deltoid works. And that's how the reverse works. Okay, so I think we're gonna call it today. Any questions? I'm gonna send you the video of what we've done today, but you guys need to participate. You know, exam may pass it on the we will have a job, then you go get the bread drop, then you go get the bread drop, then you go get the bread drop, then you Bhatti Sahib, you will have to study CPT examination. At this time, Sahib is saying that in the exam, the exam is not the case of the children, but the children are not the case of the children. Whether it's a short case or a long case, you will have to study CPT examination tomorrow. Okay, you will have to study CPT examination with Pakistan time. Perfect, sir. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. 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 ठीक है वो बोल रहे हैं बनियंस फिर फ्रैक्चर्स और फिर इसके बाद डिस्लोकेशंस तो तुम्हारा संडे को नाइन ओ क्लॉक कॉल इट डे
थैंक यू सर ओके थैंक यू सो मच सर